So, Dr. Hofstetter, Leonard rarely talks about his incredibly successful brother and sister. Please don't go there, Howard. Yeah. I understand that, unlike Leonard, they're at the top of their respective fields. Boy, you suck. Well, uh, Leonard's younger brother, Michael, is a tenured law professor at Harvard, and his sister just successfully grew a human pancreas in an adolescent gibbon. <laughs> So she's close to curing diabetes. Why else would you grow a pancreas in a teenaged gibbon? Wow, you must be very proud. Why? They're not my accomplishments. I have to urinate. Why are you doing this? You know the rules. You brought your mom to work. You must suffer. <laughs> I had no idea your siblings were so much more successful than you. <laughs> yeah, you're like the Jar Jar Binks of the Hofstetter family. <laughs> oh, Misha, thank you, Salak, and so so. <laughs> you know, rather than mock me, my friends might realize that this is difficult and try to help me through it. Nope, I think mocking you is more fun. <laughs> Next time, don't you stop bring Mama to work, okay? <laughs> That was fast. Oh, if the middle stall was occupied. I'll have to try again later. It's totally understandable. In bladder voiding, as in real estate, it's location, location, location. So where were we? Howard lives with his mother, and Raj can't speak to women unless he's drunk. Go. Oh, that's fascinating. Selective mutism is quite rare. On the other hand, an adult Jewish male living with his mother is so common it borders on sociological cliché. It's just temporary. I pay rent. He lives in the same room where his bassinet was. You know, both selective mutism and an inability to separate from one's mother can stem from a pathological fear of women. It might explain why the two of you have created an ersatz homosexual marriage to satisfy your need for intimacy. Say what? That's basically what I just said. You brought your husband to work? You know the rules. Me something can you sound looking pretty sad now too, betcha betcha. Leonard, it's one o'clock. Weren't you going to show me your laboratory at one o'clock? Yeah, there's no hurry, mother. Tell them more about their secret love for each other. But it's one o'clock. You were going to show me your laboratory at one o'clock. Her reasoning is unassailable. It is one o'clock. Fine, let's go. I think you'll find my work pretty interesting. I'm attempting to replicate the dark matter signal found in sodium iodide crystals by the Italians. So no original research? No. Well, what's the point of my seeing it? I could just read the paper the Italians wrote. Okay, just for the record, we're not in an ersatz homosexual relationship. <laughs> Well, then why didn't you say that to her? Why is it always my responsibility? Oh, it's not always your responsibility. I swear, this is the same thing you did at the comic book store last week. I can't believe you're bringing that up. I didn't bring it up. You did. We'll talk about this later. But you always say that, but we never do. You went to the comic book store without me. 